Hello everyone, it's Carol with scrap a dab -a -doo. I am here today so we can make an adorable little tea box. This is made using one of the Graphic 45 ATC boxes. I've opened it up and removed the tags that are in there because we aren't using that. And then we use the Tim Holtz Tea Time Dye, a few Prima Flowers, a couple of Martha Stewart Punches, a buckle from Tim Holtz. So it's a quick, simple little project. So let's get going. <coughs> First thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our box. And I am using the home decor the folk art chalk in the salmon coral I love this paint it's quick dry and it's kind of a dull finish it's not too shiny and we are going to just paint around all of the edges that we're not gonna cover I could have done this before because there's nothing worse than watching paint dry but I figure you guys can chat and keep each other company while we get this done. Hi Carrie. you don't need to do the centers because we're going to be covering that with paper but get all the edges real good the inside and I've cut I've painted the whole entire inside of the box except for the bottom because we'll be covering the bottom of it with paper hi Margaret how are you you get your banner done? We are using the Garden Fable paper. It is so cute. And the nice thing about these little boxes is you can get a few of them done out of the 8 by or the 6 by 6 pad. You'll have to be sure to post pictures of it when you get it done, Maggie. Or actually, you'll have to wait until after you have Marno's party. And this paint does dry rather quickly, so... And I'm using the Ranger paint brushes. I like them best because they fit my style of painting, which is I never get around to cleaning the brushes off real quick after I use them. So I can just pop them in a cup of water and let them sit for two or three days and they don't deteriorate or go away. So let's just get it all painted up here. And this does typically cover in one coat. Yes, they are. Everything's on sale. We are just decided this year that in order to be competitive in the marketplace that we were just going to um, just offer our products at 20% off. Now, some of the things that we can't do that on are like our current kits because I try to keep the price of those pretty darn low. 
um, we can't sell the Misty for less than what she sells it on her site, so we can't offer that for sale. And our score tape we always have on sale. And our Teflon tools we um, don't get a very good discount on those when we buy them so we're just making very little on them but we like to have them for more of a convenience for everyone so those things you won't find on sale I didn't leave am I frozen Hi, Midnight. How are you? Long time no see. Okay, that didn't take very long to paint. So now just give me a second. I'm going to go plop my brush in some water and I will be right back. Okay, and I we've had these Heidi swap mats in the store for a long time. Hi, Amanda. And I was painting some things, and I thought, gosh, why haven't I gotten one of those? So I got one. Now you can't cut on them but you can use them for like when you're painting or gluing or doing anything like that hi Carol are you back Maggie it looks like you're back okay so get her mat rolled up and put away okay just leave this open and let it go so the papers that I used on this were the rose ones from inside the collection and this collection has just a ton of different things and there's like four or six sheets of each paper five sheets of each so I'm gonna tear out a couple of them and now I'm not sure that um, all of these boxes measure exactly the same so I would recommend that you measure um, your box before you cut your paper so to make sure that they fit so we're going to cover all of our edges except for the edges on the inside we're just going to do the bottom so the front I am going to cut it at three and seven eighths by two and an eighth I um, am helping host a shower for my niece's wedding and so we need giveaways and so I thought that this would be 
a good thing. I was going to put some tea bags in it and maybe find a cute, that was three and seven eighths, little teacup or something to go along with it. Okay, so we're going to put it up there and dry fit it. Looks like it works pretty good. And I like to ink around my edges so that the whites, you know, and I was thinking this would be really cute too. If you had someone who was sick or not feeling good, you could put the teacups in it and you could fill it with cough drops and a little thing of aspirin and some tissues and a tea bag and, and that kind of thing. And then you could uh, give it to them. And then when they were done with it, they could have it for a keepsake. And once again, I like to use the glue stick. I think it sticks really well. It gives you a little bit of time to move it around if it's not quite in the place you like it. So you just want to center this in the center. It wasn't quite straight, so using the glue stick gives me a little bit of... Oh, wait, 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 before we do that, back up, back up the bus. We need to put a magnet on. Oh, I can go grab four of them and see. Of course, I have four. So, on this, we have a magnet underneath our paper to hold our buckle on. And the magnet is snug up right to the center. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to eyeball it. Let me run and get some of them, Carol. Hang on. Let me get the magnet drying, and then I'll run and grab some K-cups and see how many we can fit in here. So I'm using glossy accents to put the ma magnet on with. And I'm just going to eyeball the center. And it's one of the little teeny tiny rare earth magnets. Okay, so while that dries, let me go get some K-cups. Be right back. Yeah, because they have tea now in the K-Cups, too. So let's see how many we can fit in there. Oh, you're only going to fit two in here. Yeah, no matter how you do it, you're only going to get two in there. My husband's going to come home and say, why do you have K-cups in your craft room? He's going to think I'm going to move the Keurig. So let's go ahead and put our buckle on this too. And then that way we'll just be set. And I am using one of the Tim Holtz buckles. 
I just found it fit really well with this. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got it lined up to where it's directly over top of this. My magnet came off. No, no, no. And then we're going to take a pair of pliers. Or strong scissors. Or your fingers, because your fingers will bend it. And we're going to bend it down. To where it's bent okay so you want to just give it a little L thing here <laughs> yeah actually I've had to cut back on my coffee consumption so I'm trying to stick with just two a day. That doesn't count if I have an iced one, though, of course. Okay, so that's going to work. So what we want to do on this is just line it up so it's centered. Oh, boy, I think I'm going to have problems with the magnet. Okay, let's let the magnet dry, and then we'll add the buckle here in a minute. I just keep pulling it off. So we'll wait and let it dry, and then add the buckle. Once we get to the lid. So let's go ahead and add some more glue. Let me check that out. Let's see if that theory works. Nope. No matter how you do it. Oh, maybe, maybe if you squish it. Yep. You can squish it, but it doesn't look so good. Oh, thank you, Carol. I went yesterday and took my mom to have a pedicure done. We always go and get a pedicure together. And the shop had no one in it. I mean, they were, it was just us. And so, as we were getting our petties done, Mom says, gosh, while they're so not busy in here, we should have a manicure, too. And I said, okay. So, we're going to go ahead and put the paper back on, and we want to cover up that magnet. And then just push it down around there. Okay. So we're going to measure our side. So I know that the height is two and an eighth. So I'm going to go two and an eighth by three. Can you guys see me okay? Maybe I'm going to back the camera up some. Oh, 
Okay, how's that? Is that better? June Marie, I have never had a problem um, with the glue stick on painted surfaces or um, to glue it to chipboard or anything like that. I don't use it paper to paper, but at any time I'm doing a craft project and I'm putting paper to a surface, and I have even actually used the um, glue stick to glue paper to metal, and it holds. So, two and an eighth by three. And the nice thing about this is, is you're going to get your, both your sides out of one piece. So, we're going to go ahead and get both our sides out of that. Now, I don't know about any other brand of glue stick because I have been using the Pioneer glue stick for probably 10 years and I've never felt the need to try another one because I like this one so well. You know, it is, and I like the fact that you can get it in the, the bigger size, and I myself, <laughs> I buy them by the case for in my craft room. Okay, so we're going to glue our sides on. You know, the one thing about using a glue stick, though, is to make sure that you get the edges really good. So this one has a little bird on it, so I want to make sure that the bird is upright. And we're just going to center it. I like to look and make sure that it's lined up with the front. Now we're just going to do the other side. Carol, are you missing your nap today? Okay, no birds, so we can just go ahead and put this one on. Once again, I want to look and line it up with the front. Make sure that the height are still the same. So now the back piece on this one, I think, is a little... Actually, when I did this, I did the the same paper on the back here rather than on the back here. So, go ahead and measure the back. And the back is going to be... I'm going to do it at two and a quarter. By four and a half. So we'll start with our second piece of paper. Oh, Carol, you are so sweet to miss your nap. So, we're going to go ahead and glue this on the back. I know putting all the paper on isn't as fun as watching it being decorated, but it's just part of the process, you know? 
And you know, I save all of my scrap paper so that I can use it for glue paper. That way it protects my work surfaces. So we're just going to center that one on the back. It's not going to really line up with the sides, so we're just going to kind of center it in the back. Yeah, Heather and Carol are working on Gwen's last mini book. Heather showed me pictures of it last night. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Okay, so now we're going to do the top. And we're going to go four and a half. by three and three-eighths. And there's a little bird in the corner on, on this one. So I want to make sure I use it. So four. What did I say it was? Four and one, two, three. I'm going to go four and five eighths. So, are some of you starting to get your ATC cards in the mail from the ATC swap? brain freeze. Okay, so we're just going to center this on the top. A little off kilter there. But once again with the glue stick you can kind of pull it around and center it and do what you need to do. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the inside. And for this one, I used the rose paper. And what I did was I cut it to where it would be continuous. So I cut... this piece for the top at three and an eighth by four and a half. So I want to make sure it's the top So I measured up three and an eighth. And then cut it this way up the four and a half. Hi, hey, Teresa. And then the second piece. 
was two and a quarter, actually, two and three eighths. by the four and a half. That way your roses line up. on your box to where when you've got that gap it's just got a little gap but it's continuous hi Galena so. And I'm using the um, vintage photo. For some reason, I use it on everything. Hi, Amanda. Did I say hi to you already? I think so. Okay. So before we put this one down, now we want to be putting our buckle down. So I'm going to just put the buckle on the snap. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my glossy accents. And I'm going to hold the buckle in place and then I'm going to close it to where it just marks. So see now I have a little splotch of glossy accents on there to where I can see where I want to put my buckle. So I'll put some more glossy accents on there. Lift my buckle off and push it down. And it's kind of messy, but it works. So I want to make sure that's on there. And then we're going to take our top piece. I don't know, for some reason it's just the one I grab all the time. Okay, then we're going to line this. Now, wait a minute. Oh, that's not the top piece. That's the bottom piece. Let's go ahead and put it on. I was going to say, man, I cut it way too small. But I just grabbed the wrong piece. I did list the recipe kit for the next recipe book for those that are in the swap. It went up yesterday. We got everything in. I'm packing it up today and we'll be working on getting it out. You know, I like this one and I like gathered twigs too. Okay. 
So now we're going to cover the back and it's done in the rose one as well. So it's got that. So we'll leave that open so that the buckle can dry a little bit. So we're going to grab another piece of rose paper. And measure the back. So I know it's going to be two and an eighth. And I'm going to make it two and an eighth. Just a little over two and an eighth. By four. So, you guys remember that this Sunday we start daylight savings time, right? You spring your clocks ahead, so we're going to have one hour less sleep. Okay, so now all we need to do is cover the inside of the bottom. So three and seven eighths by three. I'm going to try that. And let's see, what paper do I want to use? I think we'll just use this one. So we're going to pick that one out. So three and seven eighths. And we're going to go three first. I want it this way so the words are reading. So we're going to go three by three and seven eighths. And then I'm just going to stick it down in there to make sure it's going to fit. Because you'd hate to get your glue on it. Yep, it works. So it'll be on our Saturday night for us, Heather. So it will be Sunday for you that our time changes. Oops. 
and I'm just going to slide it down in there, snug it up next to the front. And because you're using glue stick, you can move it around and get it to stay down. So I'm just going to take my square bone folder and press it in there really good. Okay, so we have our box covered and our hinge and that makes it just snap close a little bit and hold it down to where it's not flying open so there's that so now we can start to decorate National Pancake Day. I thought it was National Sisters Day or... Gosh, they've got a day for everything, don't they now? Oh, sorry about the top of my head. Alright, so for this, I used the Tim Holtz Tea Time Die. And I cut out the coffee cups. I cut them out in chipboard first and then cut them out in paper. I do have just the chipboard pieces cut out and in the store and then what you could do is just trace around your pieces with your paper, glue them down and then just sand off the edges to make them fit. Thanks Carrie. I love these little boxes and I hope the people who get them at the shower, I'm going to make one more, so I'm going to do three shower games and three gifts and all three gifts are going to be exactly alike. I might change up the cups that I get and, and stuff for it. So then we're just going to glue the paper down. Now on the teacups I took and I put one going one way and one going the other way so you can stack them. Now if you get too much glue you can wipe it off with a baby wipe. It doesn't hurt it at all. It doesn't hurt the paper and it doesn't leave it sticky. You know what I like at IHOP? I like their crepes. They're strawberry ones. But then I realized how easy it was to make crepes. the saucer. On the third one I might make a use a different pattern paper on it since I'm probably out of this pattern.
Okay. Now, these come when they get cut. You can see it comes with a slit in it. Thanks, Carol, for that. And we're going to ink around the edges. And then I'm also going to just ink here so it looks like the difference in the opening of the cup. And, you know, tea is something that never goes out of style, no matter when. It's always in style. Ooh, I like my pancakes with peanut butter and syrup. I know I'm weird. Okay. So let's start stacking our teacups. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my saucer down and I am going to use the quick dry glue. Guys want me to zoom in a little bit? Yeah, Josie, we have these cut out and in the store as well, and it comes in a set of three with the uh, saucer. And then you can just trace around them and, and cut your paper. Or we still have the die in the store as well. So then... I'm going to take a couple of foam dots. and put them on the back of this. And then some quick dry just down here at the bottom. And then we're just going to put it on top of there. And then I'm going to just, well I was, okay I'm going to. Pop that one up. And then I'm going to put a couple of larger foam back behind this one to glue it down to the top. Okay, so now your teacups are on. I 
I love this teacup die set. You know, I, what I like about the Sizzix ones like this, the bigs, is that you can cut them out of chipboard. I have a lot of the other teacup dies, the Spellbinders and the, um, gosh, a couple of the other ones. And they're the thinner dies, so you can't cut chipboard out of it. So we're just going to make our little tea bag. And then I've got the Hero Art Gems that we're going to use today for on our butterflies and on our teacup. I love the Coffee Talk papers, Carol. Love, love, love them. So I'm just going to put a gem in the center of that. And then we're going to add our flowers. And today I'm going to use the Prima Butterfly Flowers. The, I think they, they pronounce them bulb, bulbly or something like that. So I think I'm going to use the teal one. And a dark pink one. And then I think I'll use the printed one. For right there in the corner. Does that look good? I can. Is that better? <laughs> Teresa, they've been they've been talking about pancake. I think that's what I'm gonna have my husband make for dinner tonight. What do you think? Okay, so I think we're going to go with these flowers. So I'm just going to put that one down first. Okay, I need to wipe my hands off. They're sticky, so the flowers are sticking to me. You gonna make them pancakes today, Teresa? Okay, so then the next one that I'm gonna do is the teal one. And I use a lot of glue. I like them to stick. And then the last one will be this one. Now you can also glue these on with a hot glue gun. But I find that the Scotch Quick Dry works pretty good if you just let it dry. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm glad I could help. I have actually gotten two sets of the ATC cards. And I didn't even join in on it this time. There wasn't enough room for me after everyone signed up. <laughs> Pasta and chicken tenders is a good thing, too. You know, reservations is my very favorite thing to make for dinner. And I know you've probably all heard that before, but it really is. Okay, so there's the top. We're going to make our little butterfly now. And I'm using just the Martha Stewart Classic Butterfly Punch. And I'm going to... Just using the big butterfly, I'm going to punch it out of the paper to where I get the script part out of it. And then, let's see. And then I'm going to take um, a piece of the pink that's in the collection and punch it out again. And then we're going to do that again because we've got another one on the inside or on the front. So let's go ahead and just punch those out right now while we have them. So we're just going to punch out two. And we'll make them both. Let me get something with some color on it so you can see what I'm doing because it's kind of washed out here. Okay, so there's my butterflies. Yeah, Carol, I will be ordering more, but I just got a new order of the the coffee talk in, the dyes, the papers, and everything. I just can't keep it in. We're going to ink these edges. Yeah, I'll keep getting them in, Carol. That's not a problem. That's one that I'll probably keep in for a while because I think I want to use it over and over again. Um, Yeah, Carol, just go in and, and order it and um, do by pay or pay by check or money order. And then I'll just hold it for you till you can... Uh, you let me know you're ready for it. You know, I'm always willing to do that for you girls. Not a problem. Okay, so to stack them, I just take one of my little pop-up dots and my Martha knife and I just cut them in half and then I'm just going to put it in the middle of this one and kind of bend the wings up on the top one and set it on top
You know, Teresa and Carol, if you really do want to split a pack, I can I can certainly do that too. Because I do believe there's two of each sheet. Okay, so then I'm going to take three of these gems. And I am going to just lay them in the middle of the butterfly. Like that. So... Let me see if I can get autofocus on. So there you have your dimensional folk. Little butterfly. And this one we're just going to put, okay, come on, I took autofocus off, okay, we're just going to put it right down here amongst the flowers. So your top is decorated. So now we're going to tip it onto its side and we're going to decorate the front. So for this one I did the same thing cut out a large, this is the Martha Stewart Country Butterfly, and really you guys, I will be using this one all the time, all the time, it's my favorite, and then we're going to do the same thing, we're going to punch one out of each pattern paper. ink the edges. Get done here, I'll show you what we are going to work with next. Go ahead and put our other little butterfly together now. Same thing, I use the other half of the glue dot, bend the wing up, put it on the top. And sometimes when I'm working with small stuff, I like to just put it on the end of my craft knife. Just makes it so much easier to get it placed. So, same thing with this. I'm going to cut a little pop dot in half. Only I'm going to use both halves on this one. If I can find the other half. Where did it go? Huh. I jumped ship. I'm going to have to cut another one. Now how does how does a pop dot disappear? 
Oh, you know what? Because it's on the end of my craft knife. I got it. I knew they were too sticky to just disappear. Oops. Wrong one. I'm going to put it on this one. Bend the wings up. And just line them up on top because this one's a little bit bigger one two three four five I'm gonna use six of them oh well one fell off Okay, so there's that one. Bend your wings and fly. Okay. So on this one, I'm going to use the wings. Or the leaves. And these are the Prima leaves for the butterfly collection. And the one thing I noticed is the Butterfly Collection and the Garden Fable, they both have the same color palette. And so you can mix and match um, the stuff that goes with them. So I think I'm going to use the blue leaves on this one. What do you think? You like the blue? And I think I'll use the brown flower because I think that'll make it stand out. What do you think? Blue and the brown? But I think on the leaves, I'm going to just darken up the edges a little bit more so that they kind of stand out. Okay. So if you leave the top off of your glue, just poke that back down in there. Sometimes I've been known to leave the cap off of the glue overnight. So when I come into my craft room in the morning, mm -hmm. it's dried up. So... What I do, oh, I think I want the big one in back, is I take this cap off. I'll just untwist it. And I will take a bowl of water and put it in the microwave, the bowl of water, not with the cap in it, in the microwave for about two minutes and make it really hot. And then I just take this whole thing and I just drop it down in the water and let it sit for two or three minutes. And then after it's done that, I drain the water off and I'm able to poke this down in and then I just rinse it all out and let it dry out and put it back on. And that'll keep it from, you know, forcing this down into the, the neck of it. I've had a few that have broken when I've tried to do that. 
So I just do a maintenance on them and and clean them. So you know what? I really don't like that brown flower on there. It just looks too dull. That one blends in. I think I'm going to go with the pink. Yep, I'm going with the pink. The brown one just looked too dull. Okay. Then we're going to put our butterflies down. And voila. Our box is complete. It's a quick project. Everything's drying. Now another fun thing that would be fun to put in here is a few candles and You guys are too funny. So, that is our tea box. Oh, let me go grab a couple tea bags. So I have not gotten out and gotten the tea bags to put in this yet, but you just set them down in there, or you can stack them up just laying them down. But I think I'll put in a few to where they go sideways and just stack up. Or you can also put them in like this. And they just fit right in there. <laughs> I <know. laughs> I'm getting in my mocking miles today, that's for sure. So you guys want a sneak peek of what I'm going to try and do next? Hi, Bev. Okay. So it's going to be a stretch for me, and we're going to start it and work on it together. I am not going to make a preview of it. I'm just going to go for it and see how it turns out live. What do you think of that? 
but I will be put I'm going to pull things that I'm going to use and I will make a list of it and put it in the store all together so that you guys can get whatever you need for it. So let me zoom out. Ooh, maybe that's a little too far. Okay. So, what we are going to work on is this Heartfelt Creations album. We saw it at, I know, I'm going to be brave. <laughs> I am, I'm going to be brave. So, this is, um, and if Janny would, could you find the links to this album and put them in? I think it's under What's New. I've been kind of playing around with it. But it's the Heartfelt Creation album. And then we're going to be using the two insert pocket folds. I know, June Marie, it is. It is so, so pretty that I just really feel like I'm, I have to do it. I am not a bookmaker. I look at all you people that take and make all these mini books and stuff. And I just can't do it. So my thing is going to be a pre-made. Now, if you look at this. I've kind of gotten the inserts in where I think I'm going to put them. I mean, this album holds a ton. It is huge. And you can embellish this and put more papers on it, and there's still plenty of room in here. So the inserts we're going to use, they're just all different sizes and dimensions and I've just gone through and kind of placed them in here where I think I'm going to use them and then we will go back and add them and decorate them and get them going now I have a paper and it's not listed yet because it just came in. And I know Ashley is going to be using this paper too. And it's from Blue Fern Studio. It's the Timeless Collection. And I'll be putting these in packs, and the packs will have two of each sheet in the packs. So this is called Freedom. And this one is Couture. Look at these. Ashley showed me these. Said, can we get them? Can we get them? This one is Song. Um, Teresa, I'm going to postpone, um, I, I was saying by the end of March, but because we had such a tough time getting in the papers for this one, I'm going to say by the end of April. So I'll put it in the newsletter too. So this one is McConnery. Look at that. And it's got a green that doesn't show green on this, but it is a, a real pretty green. And this one is Papillons. And 
And this is a green again, only it's kind of like a, a greenish black. This one is artistic. <laughs> I got a little bit of it in, Heather. If not, they're really fast at shipping, so if I run low, I will order more. And this one is Keepsakes, and it's just got a lot of, like, letters and stuff on it. And this is kind of a yellowish. And this one's called Abode. And it's got pretty birds. I know, isn't this paper just gorgeous? And that's kind of got a black and greenish wood grain. Yeah, and this one is called Main Street, and it's kind of like got bricks on it. I thought this would might be pretty for the cover of it. The birds and the little street light over here. And then just a kind of a solid black. And this one is called Calling Cards. And it's got cards on it. So that is the paper that I'm going to be using on it. I will have it either listed tonight or tomorrow at the latest. And then I will also be pulling um, other items. And I will have it all in the category under designers we follow and it's called carol's corner and it will be the heartfelt creations album so that's what we're going to be doing i know heather i know but i'm carrie i'm going to cut into it i'm just going to do the best i can with it and I'm going to try and only use one sheet of everything so I have one 12 by 12 left. But we're going to do it. That's going to be a big album and it's going to have little pieces. And I am going to have, um, I've ordered in matching cardstock to go with it. So I will put cardstock packs together as well. And then I've got some other items at random that I've just. Pulled. I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but there's things I've pulled. Um, flowers, chipboard flowers, chipboard tickets, a chipboard marquee, um, the Bow Bunny jewels. I don't know. Those are not part of it. They were just on my counter. And I'm going to work in the um, tricycle. And then we might use some of these butterflies. And the Prima Archivist flowers, these ones, match perfectly with it. And then I'm probably going to add in some beads, some seam binding and ribbon. And then I might use a couple little file folders. I know, Carrie. If I can get away with it, yeah, it just doesn't seem like it would... I love those tricycles. I collect them. I have about four metal tricycles. So, that's what we're going to be working on next. It will be in two weeks. I won't be on next week. Gwen is here next week. But I will be back the following week. Heather, I will gather some lace and see if I can't get some lace in here, too. Hi, Meg. How are ya? We're just finishing up. So, 
So, any questions, comments? You can find all of the items that we're going to be using at www.scrapadabadoo.com. That's S C R A P A D A B A D O O dot com. I will make sure it gets recorded. And then I've got a couple other projects that I think I'm just going to record and put on YouTube because I certainly won't have enough time to do it all on recordings because I think that album's going to take us a little while to get done. So if you don't have any questions, I am going to sign off and let you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm glad you came. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at scrapadabadoo at comcast.net. Take care, you guys. Thanks.